Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and a brand new episode of my Moto GP18 career mode and today we are here for another two more races in this episode and hopefully we can try and once again try and hold on to that third place in the championship. If you guys didn't miss the last episode, a very interesting episode then do check that one out in the top right hand corner of your screen by clicking on the card annotation because we bought four upgrades for this, for this episode and if you want to check which ones they were then check out the last episode to see exactly what went down but we go into this race this race weekend very very confident and in this episode we're going to be racing first of all around the brand new thailand so okay at burinam so this is going to be very interesting for me uh, i'm going to need a lot bit, a lot a lot of practice around this i've never raced around this track um i'm going to stick with 105 percent ai i was debating knocking it down because i've not raced around this circuit before um but you know what i'm going to stick with it i'm going to probably be in trouble i'm going to regret it i'm sticking on 105 but you know what we're just going to go for it and hope for the best so hopefully it goes okay for us and i'm going to jump into some practice now and see if i can improve but i'll cut back to you guys for the start of qualifying okay i'm currently in practice just getting some warm-up laps you know some installation laps i've already got a bit of an idea how the track goes i'm generally quite good at learning new tracks um straight away i gotta say i'm quite impressed um i quite enjoy the track it's quite unique it's different it's got some massive straights, a la Tilk in F1. But then there's some nice sort of swooping corners with some very sharp hairpins. So, um, a very nice little balance. I quite like it. Um, just getting a few warm-up laps and then I'm going to delve into the tyre test. I think for this episode, I might just stick with um, Thailand. Uh, I won't do a double header because it's just a new track and there's so much more to do and so much more to learn. I feel like this might be a bit more special if we just sort of stick to um, learning this track. Right, I've got enough of a balance on the bike to know, um, more or less, get an idea how the track goes. So I'm going to jump into the development test and do the complete test. So hopefully we'll get some more R&D points put away. And uh, yeah, once we do this, I'll do a few more laps maybe and then jump into qualifying and see if I can find more pace in the qualifying session. So far, the test is going very well. Very straightforward. Last checkpoint and we have completed it. So overall, a great success. The lap time is going to be a little bit slow compared to my personal best, but miles faster than the threshold. So I'm not too worried there, but we're going to come across the line. And as you can see, that is going to be a successful test for us. So yeah, very good news. And I think I'm going to jump in the qualifying now. I'm going to give it a go and uh, see what happens. Right then, it's qualifying at Burinam. And uh, hopefully we can have a good one. I feel quietly confident, optimistic. We've got PA in practice. Only seven tenths off of Kenneth. Obviously, the lap times are going to really drop here in qualifying. But I think we can improve. I'm going to simulate time to around 25 minutes. I do want some good reference lap times on the board. My lap time in practice was a 42.7 or 42.8. So you get a bit of an idea of what the pace I've got is at the minute. Um, we'll go there and we'll go out onto the track and see what our pace is like. So far so good. Apparently 1.8 up according to the sector time. I'm not sure if it is 1.8 to the fastest time because if it is 1.8 that's going to be a bloody quick lap from me. But otherwise it's been a very good lap. This final sector is pretty fun actually. Just got to find the break point which is about there. I use the sort of lines on the outside. Final corner. Nicely done. Power on. Let's see where this opening lap puts us. 42.4. Not bad. That's a good opener. P1 at the moment. That is going to get smashed, but we can improve on that. All right, final corner. Another attempt on for an improvement. Just. Do we actually go even faster? Yes, we do. 40.0. That's a bit better of a time. That's a little bit more competitive. Now we're talking. I wonder if that will actually get beaten so easily. We're on for another improvement here, if I can just really get the final corner perfect, which I have done. I've broken nice and late, probably going a little bit later than that even still. Out of the final corner, power on. Do we improve? No, we don't. We lose it all. So that final sector was really good in the last lap. Let's try again, but I definitely think we can get to 1 minute 41 here. So far, just a fraction up in sector 1. But I ran, I ran really, really deep in the last corner, which is uh, where, the, where the sector split is. So right now, if I get this corner hooked up, which I have done a little bit wide at the apex, but... We'll let it slide, that still works for me. Yep, we're up by two tenths. Still two tenths up after sector three. Just gotta make sure I get sector four perfect. It all comes down to this final corner. How late can I break? Very late, but I've missed my apex a little bit there, which is not ideal. On the power. Out of the final corner, do we get to a minute 41? Not quite. We actually match our lap time. Identical. That was so close. Right, so far so good. Still in first place, 60 minutes to go. My tires were starting to go off, so um, I've come in and given a bit of time. I'm going to simulate the session a bit. There we have the reference lap times. Kenet and Martin, 41.1 and 42.2. So it's all very close. I'm going to skip time a bit inside the last 10 to 8 minutes and let's see if there's any improvements on the board. I'm very impressed with the pace. We feel really good around here. I'm very, very happy with how the bike's performing. Okay, I'm going to go into the final 5 minutes. Let's see. Right, no improvements. So 
I'm gonna go. I want to try and go for the kill. If I get into 141, I reckon that's that's it, done and dusted. So let's go for it. Let's look for that pole position, and that'll be an incredible result if we pull this out of the bag. So let's go for it. Right then, we're gonna go for the Banzai attempt. Three minutes to go. We've got two laps in this. Okay, we are flying the first sector over a tenth up. That is by far the best first sector I've had out of the hairpin. Not the best of exits, but we'll take it. I know there's about one to two tenths to gain in sector two because I made a mistake on my best lap. So let's try and carry it through here. Well, I actually lost a bit of time in that sector two. That was a bit annoying. Maybe my hairpin where the sector one is wasn't great. So we're only marginally up in sector two at the moment. Very good sector three, but Suzuki Suzuki is really disturbing me here. I was two tenths up. I feel like I might have lost all my advantage already, which is very annoying. Oh, come on. I'm sort of boxed in. This is very, very annoying. Last corner. How late do I break? I guess we'll find out. Down to the apex. Power on. Slow and steady. Does it. Up to the line. Yes, there it is. A 41.6. That is all she wrote. I'm not even going to bother. That was the lap right there. Breaking super late and getting it down to the apex. Just about. I could feel the bike about to go. But I got it down to the apex, got the power on nice and early. And that is what I'm talking about. A 41.6. That has to be pole. That brings an end to this qualifying session. And after a thrilling contest where the riders gave their all right up until the end, we can finally find out the name of the rider who will start from pole position tomorrow. And there we have it. That is the very last thing I expected after qualifying. I really did not think we'd be anywhere near the top. But yeah, there, there you go. New track. Maybe the AI ain't as fast when it comes to the coding, but we've taken it. So now we've got to try and convert that pole into a race win tomorrow in the race. We're moving now to the Moto3 class grid, where engineers and technicians are ironing out the last few details before the race starts. Here we go then, it's race time. I've got to say, if we win here, I'll be ecstatic. It's going to be one of them races where um, Silverstone was the top of the pile. It's going to get hard to beat Silverstone in terms of what it meant to me. Uh, but this was one of the tracks when I looked at the calendar at the start of the season. I never, ever thought more than any other track that I would never have a chance of winning a race. Yet we're on pole position. So hopefully we can do well. It's a fairly short one to turn one. I'm hoping I get a good start and we'll just take it from there. But overall, like I said, one race for this episode because we want to focus on this one. So hopefully it goes okay for us and we can try and have a good race. So with that being said, let's jump into it now for the Thailand Grand Prix. Okay, let's get ready then for the five red lights. Let's get the assists off. And we are away at Burinam, and it looks like a pretty decent start. Not too bad. I've had much worse. We cover off the inside a bit. Nice and aggressive into turn one, making sure that we don't get picked up too much. But they've all sort of forced their way through, which is not ideal. I'm trying to straighten up the bike here. But so far, P6, very poor start. It was okay until turn one, where everyone just literally launched down my inside. I thought I had the inside covered, but everyone still went for it nonetheless. So... Let's make sure we get it all sorted out into turn three, the hairpin. This is a corner I'm actually pretty good at on the brakes. And also mid corner as well. The AI seems to be pretty poor. We get a nice exit there. As you can see, nice exit speed on Bastianini. We're going to get a triple overtake on the cars, it looks like. Very nicely done. There we go. Up back up into third place. Fantastic overtake. And we've got Canet and Martin battling out for the race lead here. And I'm very strong for this sector of the track as we get very close to these guys. What are we like on the break-in? I guess we'll find out. Not too bad. I feel confident. Right. We can definitely attack this one for a change. We're definitely the favourites on the front foot. So let's take our time and let's pace ourselves. For a change, it just feels like I can actually make a move at any corner under braking. I feel like I'm the better on the brakes than pretty much any of the corners around this circuit. So that's a very good thing to have in mind. Especially, I think, now this is the final sector where I'm, I think I'm so much faster than the AI. Especially on the braking into that final hairpin. I reckon I've got a chance. I'm very wide, I've got to admit. A little bit too wide for comfort. I'm going to get myself back on the racing line there. I've lost a little bit of time, but we definitely feel racy here today. Once again, we've had a great exit out of the hairpin. We're relatively close to Martin here. We're gaining a bit in the slipstream. I might be able to have a go into the brakes, into the next left-hand hairpin. Once we get through this left-hander, if I can just get the momentum very close. Almost touch the back rim there, but we're going to be right on his heels as we go into the brake zone on the inside. Nicely done, but he... Cuts right back underneath me there. Nicely done, to be fair to his credit. He's done me nicely. But this track is so good for allowing a switchback opportunity. As you can see, they've had a great run. Nice bit of speed. Opening up the line a lot more thanks to the switchback. And we've now got ourselves into P2. And we are right behind Aaron Canet right now, who is the race leader. So let's try and maybe look for a pass on him on the power nice and early. Taking it easy not to lose, the not, not, not lose any stability in the back end. Nice and tight through there. 
I think we're good now. The final corner, I'm, I'm the best on the brakes, but the AI are brilliant at picking up the traction, so I've got to try and brake as it as I can to not allow Martin back up my inside, covering the inside nicely on the power. You see how red those arrows get when he's right on my chuff there, but anyway, a 42.1, that's pretty much matching qualifying pace there, and that's Kanet's pace, who was the second place man. So right now, we are very quick around here, which is good to see. And we've still got another two more laps to go after this one, so three laps in total. This is looking very good so far. So close to Kanet now on this lap, breaking very late into this sort of right-hand swooping bend. On the power early, bring the bike over to the left, stay nice and tight, straighten up the bike. We are now really pulling away from Martin, and it's me versus Kanet at the moment as we go into the final corner. Breaking late, first gear action on the inside. Carver him off, block pass maneuver, and there we go, first place. I wasn't really expecting to make the move into there, but Martin just didn't, sorry, Kanet just didn't really pick up the pace. We go into the 1 minute 41, so we did in qualifying, which is normally a telltale sign that we've got the pace, and uh, the AI won't be able to keep up with that pace. So right now, P1, two laps to go. We're looking very, very comfortable. Let's make sure we make no mistakes and we try and bring this one home because this, this would be a fantastic W and uh, one of the biggest wins of the season. Oh, a bit hot into the hairpin there. Just uh, got a little wrong. Had bikes on my inside. A little bit too hot on the brakes. I was going to say, last lap of the Grand Prix, that massive straight is one of the biggest I've ever seen, if not the biggest in the calendar. Um, the run from one to three is just so, so long and that would be the last sort of major overtaking opportunity for the AI. And they almost got me there as so I completely got the braking wrong, but not close enough as I'd already opened up enough of a gap. So right now, it's just a question of nursing it through these last few corners. Into sector four, nice and tidy through there. Gradual application of the power. Keep it nice and clean, nice and tidy. No touching of the curbs if possible. There we go, nicely done. Now we just got a brake late for the hairpin, cover off the inside crucially and make sure no one makes the move. Down to the apex, easy on the tires. On the power nice and early. And there we go. We're going to win the Thailand Grand Prix. Get in. Wow. I'm very impressed. Very happy with that. Did not expect that one one bit. And we pick up a massive 25 points. But now let's run you through the final race results. While the riders complete their victory lap, let's take a look at the final ranking of the Moto3 race. And there you have it. And the pace speaks for itself. The only man in the 1 minute 41s and pretty much replicate and give or take my qualifying pace. So overall, very well deserved victory for us and we will carry those points forward into the Riders Championship where you can see we've now got some comfortable breathing space of around 29 to 30 points over the Gian Antonio for third place. So right now we're looking very comfortable in the third place spot. Realistically, we could try and pursue the runner-up um, but we are 85 points behind so it's a long way to go and realistically with the amount of races we have left we're going we're gonna to need Kanet or Martin to sort of fall off one or two times but you never know, it could still happen but uh, realistically we've got to be happy with third place. So we're here in the end screen and we are now firmly the first rider. Now obviously because I'm only doing this after one episode, the amount of points we have to develop the bike aren't as much as normal. However, we still have 7,864 to spend. So looking at the graph, there's one thing that seems out of place and that is engine power. So we're going to get the upgrade on the bike and that should do it for this episode. Hopefully that will arrive for the next race, which I believe will be Mategi, yeah, Japan and Mategi. So that's going to be the next one. Well, in the next one will be Mategi and also uh, Philip Island. And then we'll have the finale around Malaysia and Valencia. So two more episodes of the Moto3 category. Actually, it's come around quite quick. And then we should inevitably get promotion to Moto2, which I'm looking forward to. But anyway, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this episode of the Moto GP career mode. If you have, then please do smash the like button, guys, for the race victory. And let's try and smash 150 likes for this episode. If you're new around here, please do subscribe for daily Formula 1 and Moto GP content. And finally, do turn notifications to not miss a single upload from me. And also, do t check out these videos on screen if you have missed them to see what other content I've been doing lately. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's see my next video very soon. Goodbye.